Hey guys, welcome to The Disruptors, the podcast where we get the folks that are thinking about and transforming the future. Today, we've definitely got one of them. What do you think about the dichotomy with the, the US system of more open internet versus the Chinese system of a more closed and centralized? Well, look, it, you know, not surprisingly, I have pretty strong views about this. I mean, my, my name was a banned to search term uh, on the internet in China when I was working for President Obama, specifically because one of the programs that I ran was our internet freedom agenda. Um, you know, everything right down to the funding of Tor and other proxy and circumvention technologies so that when people are in China, they can communicate with the outside world. So look, I have, I have a strong ideological view that the, that the openness of our networks are at the core of why we have had so much innovation and wealth creation over the last quarter century and closing those networks censoring those networks, um, having centralized command and control of those networks uh, is as authoritarian as, I mean, it's that's 21st century authoritarianism in my view. It is, but let's play devil's advocate. Can it be a more effective system? I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I think a lot of the things that China is doing are terrible. I right. just see them kicking the US's butt when it comes to a lot of funding, innovation, growth, and future industries. Yeah, so let's make a distinction between two things. You know, one sort of centralized industrial policy and another, you know, open or closed internet. You know, having Beijing um, instrument industrial policy in a way that does not happen in the United States lends itself to certain efficiencies. You know, it makes it easy to commandeer an entire economy. Everything that happens in that country of 1.3 billion people flows from a strategy that Xi Jinping has architected in Beijing. That, that enables a level of coordination, discipline, and strategy that our messier, more decentralized America does not allow for. Here's the thing, it, though. I will trade our messier, less controlled environment over the more centralized command and control environment of the Chinese any day of the week. Um, even in fields like AI, where the Chinese have made remarkable gains because of the will that they have, I would take $100 million of American R&D in a more open environment over $500 million in the Chinese more closed R&D models uh, any day. What are you most excited about? I'm most excited about the commercialization of genomics. You know, each of us have 20 to 25,000 genes in our body. And, you know, for many years, ever since the mapping of the human genome, you know, 20 some odd, 20 ish years ago, we've imagined a day where we might be able to do precision medicines and, and you know, diagnostics that are otherworldly relative to the medical practices of our youth, I think we're getting really close to that. I think that the ability to, you know, the ability to identify cancerous cells at one one hundredth of what can be seen by an MRI by doing a simple genetic sample, it's not going to, it's not that doesn't cure cancer, but for many cancers, it takes it from being an automatic killer to being something that is is really treatable. I think that. You know, we were talking earlier in this conversation about how, you know, glo global life expectancy when I was born was 58. Today, it's over 70. The way for global life expectancy to get into the 80s, I believe, is through the commercialization of genomics. And then from a wealth creation standpoint, I think it's going to be, you know, internet-like in its impact. Uh, you know, the world's last trillion dollar industry was created out of computer code. The world's next trillion dollar industry, I believe is gonna be created out of out of genetic code. If you had to leave people with one thing, a quote, a call to action, what would it be and why? So I would say it's to make mistakes of commission rather than omission. I mean, the one quote that is most inspirational to me was said over a hundred years ago by Teddy Roosevelt. And he said, it's far better to dare mighty deeds to win glorious triumphs even though checkered by failure, than to rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy much nor suffer much because they dwell in a gray twilight that knows neither victory nor defeat. And so for me, I'd rather, my advice to people is enjoy much and suffer much. You know, make, have big wins and big losses, 
both, uh, you know, that life is better than a life in the gray twilight where you know neither victory nor defeat. 